Hello, everyone. Welcome to Technologies Discussion Channel. Today, I'd like to continue the discussion on parameters. Earlier on, I have done the part one series discussion on S parameters. At this part one series discussion, I actually made an interesting way so that you know what is S11, S12, S21, and S22. So this video is the former so-called the introduction of S parameters, which is also known as scattering parameters or S metric. This will be the part two series discussion. The earlier on series discussion on the parameters, for example, the Z, which is the impedance parameters, the Y, which is the emittance parameters, and also the earlier on part one series discussion on the S parameters, I have put those video under the description. So please take a look on those video if you're keen to know more about parameters. Maybe later on, I will also do this A, B, C, D and also a quick comparison between all these parameters and why we insist to use one particular one. This is my email. If you have any question regards on today's discussion, please drop me an email. Before I continue, I'd like to urge you guys to support this channel by pressing the like and also the subscribe button. Please also turn on your notification bell in order to receive more information from this channel. Once again, sincere thanks for your strong support. Earlier on, on the part one series discussion, I actually have defined what is actually scattering or S parameters. But over this part here, I want to further illustrate the definition of S parameters. In fact, with a little bit more detail so that you can fully aware how we actually can make use of S parameters to describe a network. By definition, an S parameters is the ratio of the voltage, both magnitude and phase of a signal coming out, okay, which means that the wave they actually reflected of a network port to that of the signal going into the port. Okay, which means that an uh, incident wave. So over here, you can see that S parameters is mainly either incident wave or reflected wave, which I'm going to fully illustrate later on. Okay, the source and load impedance are 50 ohm. Okay, remember earlier on, I have also mentioned that for S parameters, we are not going to have short circuit or open circuit. Okay, so instead of perfect short circuit, which is very difficult to achieve, or perfect open circuit, again, is also very, very difficult to achieve at very high frequency. We actually use this load, 50 ohm load to be more precise, so that there will not be having any reflection. And hence, there will not be having any either A1 or A2, okay, which I'm going to illustrate later on. The S parameters of a device can be plotted on a Smith chart or polar plot. Okay, so mainly you can discuss about Smith chart, okay, how we actually can plot the point on S parameters. Okay, so with time, maybe later on, I will show how we can actually plot the S parameters onto the Smith chart to show change with respect to frequency. Okay, earlier on, on part one series, I have clearly emphasized that S parameters is a function of frequency. When frequency change, your S parameters also change. Over here, beside frequency, I want to highlight that the DC biasing condition will also change the S parameters. For example, amplifier, okay, you can have different, for example, a linear zone or saturation zone. Based on the DC biasing, okay, we can actually drive the amplifier either at the linear zone or actually at the saturation zone. With this actually different zone, okay, the S parameters also change. Hence, it's very essential okay, to describe a DC biasing condition if it's applicable. Okay, so this diagram here shows a two-port network. Okay, so as I mentioned earlier on, Okay, mainly for S parameters, we are only dealing with either the incident or the reflected wave. To make things easy, A1 or A2, they actually go into the network. So therefore, this is what we call an incident wave. As for B1 and B2, they actually so-called left the network. 
So hence, this is actually called a refracted wave. Under the part one series discussion, I have mentioned this. I have made a video so that you will be able to remember okay, what is actually the meaning of S11, S12, S21, and S22. Okay, hopefully, after that particular video, which is the part one series, okay, you understand okay, how they actually are all named as following. The scattering matrix okay, or S parameters is the same thing. It's a mathematical construction that quantify how RF energy propagate through a multi-port network. Okay, so in this diagram here, it's just a simple two-port network. So over here, basically the RF energy, okay, either the incident wave or the refracted wave at the input, the incident wave and refracted wave at the output. Basically with this, we can actually use a S metric to describe the network. For example, for this case, it's a two-port network. The S parameters is what allow us to accurately describe the property of a complicated network as a simple black box. Okay, imagine this is a simple black box with the incident wave, okay, for example here, and also with the refracted wave, we can actually use this S parameters to describe the characteristics of this black box. For an RF signal incident on one port, Okay, so for example here, let's say this is the RF signal that is actually incident on this one port here. Some fraction of that signal get reflected back. Okay, earlier on, I have also discussed this when they actually incident, some part will be reflected back. So this is what we call S11. Okay, so this is what illustrated in red here. And out of the incident port, okay, some of it enter into the incident port. Okay, which means that they successfully penetrate into the network and finally they actually appear at the output. Okay, so this is what I mean. And then exit some or all of the other port. Okay, so for this case, it's just a two port. So basically the energy actually appear at the port two, which is the output over here. Okay, so this is the meaning what this few line sentences mean. Okay, so this is a... S parameters, so from here, I can actually open up the matrix. So it's B1, S11, A1. Okay, so B1 equals to S11, A1. Plus, okay, so over here is S12, A2 over here. Same wise here for B2, which is equals to S21, A1 plus S22, A2. Okay, so this is how I actually can obtain the S parameters matrix from here. Okay, so let's do a little bit more understanding. Okay, what is all these S parameters? Okay, if either port is terminate with the characteristic impedance, okay, which means that we actually put a load, 50 ohm load on either the input or output. Okay, the refraction term for a signal sent to the port becomes zero. Okay, which means that, for example, this is a DUT. If I put the load at the input or I put at the load at the output, so if I put the load at the input, okay, this incident wave becomes zero. If I put this at the output, then this incident wave at the output becomes zero. So this is what it means. Thus, if port 2 is terminate in Z0 and an incident signal apply to port 1. Okay, so therefore, if I only want to terminate, let's say for this case here, at the output here, then my supply will be at the port 1. So this is what it means. So over here in this diagram here, for example, this is my supply, which is the incident wave, which is called A1, if you still remember. Okay, so when they actually hit the DUT, for example, here, you imagine that the waveform from a, let's say, from a coaxial cable, they actually hit this DUT. Okay, because of the difference of impedance, for example, okay, some will be reflected back. Okay, so some will be reflected back. Some wave, incident wave will be reflected back some will be able to continue to penetrate and finally outcome at the output, okay, which means that this is a transmission coefficient or forward transmission coefficient, which I have illustrated earlier on. And in order to prevent A2, we must terminate this with a load. So once we terminate this with a load, we can assume that A2 will be equal to zero. So this is the meaning of this two-port network. Okay, I hope you have a better understanding. 
So what happened here is basically this is a duty. Okay, so for example, now I want to obtain the S parameters. I actually inject the incident wave over here at the input and in order to prevent any output incident wave, I actually terminate this with a load impedance of 50 ohm, for example. Then therefore, I can assume that A2 is equal to zero. And therefore, this is my only source that actually apply to port one or the input. Okay, once they enter into the DUT because of mismatch of impedance, some will be reflected back as illustrated over here. Some will be reflected back. So this reflected back is what we call a S11. Some will be able to penetrate through the DUT and finally outcome at the output. Okay, so which is illustrated here. So therefore, this is what we call a forward transmission coefficient, which is S21. Okay, so this is another diagram to illustrate all this. But if you understand what I mentioned, I don't see any issue. So over here, you can find out S11 and also S21. So basically, it's reflection over incident. So basically, reflection for this case here, okay, it's, it's 1, 1. So basically, will be under the reflection is basically B1 over the incident, which is A1. So in order for this to be accurate, I need to have A2 is equal to zero. So I need to put a load at the port two in order to achieve what is actually S11. Same for S21. Okay, because the source is at port one, okay, I actually do a measurement at the port two or at the output. So therefore, how I actually obtain S21 will be under the transmission over the incident. Okay, I need to know the ratio, how much actually transmit. And of course, again, I must ensure that A2 is equal to zero by inserting a load impedance of 50 ohm onto the output. Okay, hopefully with this, you are a little bit more clear on this S parameters. Let's quickly also understand what if I actually supply at port two. Earlier on, I actually supply at port one. So this example, I will show that if I actually supply at port two, so when this actually happened, okay, in order to prevent A1 is equal to zero, okay, I need to put a load impedance onto the input ports of the DUT. Okay, so imagine I put a 50 ohm over here. I put my source at the port two or at the output over here. So therefore, again, like what I mentioned earlier on, because once they enter into the DUT because of mismatch, okay, S22 can actually occur. Okay, some of the incident wave will be reflected back. So basically, this is what we call a S22. And again, some of the wave will be able to penetrate through the DUT and finally outcome at the output of the DUT. And hence, this is what we also call S12, reverse transmission coefficient. Again, let's quickly visit this S22. Okay, so earlier on, I have mentioned this also is quite similar with S11. It's in fact reflect over incident. So over here, the reflect, okay, sorry, the reflect is actually here, which is P2, divided by A2. Remember the source, I put my source over here. And what happened here is some will be reflected back. Okay, so this is basically how much reflected back will be P2 over A2. And I need to ensure my A1 is equal to zero by putting a load at actually at the input. Next, as for S12, okay, so S12 means that I actually have an incident wave at port two or at the output. Okay, I want to see how much is able to achieve at the input port now, okay, which is B1. So basically B1 over A2 will give me the coefficient of S12. Okay, so hopefully with this, you have a better understanding on S parameters. With this, I'd like to end my discussion. Please sub to like and subscribe. Once again, sincere thanks for your strong support. See you guys.